So there are many, many types of fanfiction that you can find out there in the world. Uh, there's the high school AU ones, where they just take all the characters from whatever series we're, they're working on and put them into high school for some reason. Uh, there's the self-inserts, which is where you basically just take a character which is either just straight up the author or someone who's meant to be the author and just have them go into the story and go on adventures with the uh, main characters. There's shipping, which is where you just take two characters and have them fall in love, whether they're actually in love in the main series or not. Uh, and then there's the weird sex ones, which are pretty self-explanatory, it's just people having sex. And obviously there's crack fix, which are not meant to be taken seriously, they're just supposed to be super weird and out there. But the two, uh, two of my favorite types of fanfiction are the ones you can actually buy as a physical book. And uh, Jenny Nicholson has a couple of good videos on this. She has one where she goes through a Jeff the Killer fanfiction, which you can actually buy, it was self-published on Amazon. Well, I don't think you can buy it anymore. I think the person who published it took it off the market, but that's another story. Uh, and then she also has one on a Star Wars fanfiction, and those are fun. And then there's fanfictions about real people, which those are odd to me, but I would imagine it's kind of the same as self-insert ones or shipping ones where you just think, oh, I want to fall in love with this person or something like that. Now, the most famous series I can think of that combines these two things, so it's fanfiction about a real person that you can buy, is After. And that was, uh, if you're unfamiliar, a Wattpad story that was about a self-insert character falling in love with Harry Styles, and then it got big enough that the author just changed the names and published it as a real book, and then made a bunch of sequels. But there's also the Obama Biden Mysteries series, which I have uh, reviewed the first two books in that, and I don't think I'm going to read any more of them, but you know, it's it's the same idea. It's fan fiction about real people. But I decided, in the vein of Obama Biden Mysteries, to take those two ideas, real person fanfic can buy as an actual book, and then I decided to include comics in there. So today we're looking at comic books about Barack Obama that you can actually buy as physical books. Now, I didn't actually go out and buy all of these because a lot of them are just really expensive. You can only find them on eBay and people are charging like $20 for a 20-page comic book or something. But you can technically buy all of these, so it, the criteria still fits. And, well, that's enough intro. Let's go. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So the first series I want to talk about is called Drafted. Now this one is a pretty short comic series, it only went for 12 issues, and it, it was, came out in around uh, 2007, I believe, and it's all about one day aliens come to Earth and they conscript all of humanity into their war effort against some other aliens. And when I first heard that, I thought, wow, that sounds really cool, and it's it's actually not. You know, the, the series as a whole is just kind of okay, I think, but it has a, a really cool setup, obviously, but it has way too many characters for such a short, uh, yeah, for such a short run. Uh, none of them really get a chance to stand out or do anything of note, really. Other than, uh, President Prescott Walker, who's in there, I, he, I thought, was a pretty good character, but other than that, none of them really stood out, and the plot is basically just, okay, aliens arrive, and things are kind of interesting, and then it's just them preparing for war, preparing for war, preparing for war, and then big battles happen at the end, and there's a plot twist which is pretty easy to see coming, and the whole thing just feels kind of unfinished. And at first I thought that maybe the series just got cancelled early, but I don't think that's the case, because a year later they came out with a spin-off called Drafted 100 Days. So this is a short spin-off graphic novel which features Barack Obama, and it takes place after the main series, and Chicago has been completely destroyed by aliens, it's been almost completely abandoned, there's very few people there anymore, and there's crazy weather, so it's basically like the Arctic there, it, everything's frozen, and so a crew of builders go there to rebuild the city, and they're led by Barack Obama, and they're kind of cut off because the weather is getting weird, so it's blocking signals and stuff, I don't, I don't know, it, it seems like alien technology would get around that, but whatever, it's a plot device. Uh, and at first I thought that okay, these people are going to be led by Barack Obama, and he also got some sort of injury so he can't speak, and so the audience is going to realize, oh, okay, that's Barack Obama, but the characters either aren't going to realize that, or they're just not going to acknowledge it, like they're going to call him Barry or something. 
But then, no, that like a page after Obama first showed up, some guy says, don't you recognize this guy? This is Senator Barack Obama, because I guess he never became president in this world. And a after that, it's just, um, it it's pretty simple, I guess, because Barack Obama, well, he was still injured, He, but he can talk, he just doesn't do it very much or very loud, so there's that, I guess. And anyways, the building crew is just stranded, they have no communication with the outside world, they're getting attacked by sh shrag uh, by scavengers, that's the word. <laughs> I kept wanting to say something else, but no, they keep getting attacked by scavengers, they're low on supplies, people are deserting, and they can't call for help, and then it ends uh, on 100 days of this, uh, Barack Obama climbs to the top of the tallest tower he can find, and cuts out his tracking chip from his arm, and holds it up, and he finally gets a signal, so people come to rescue them. And that's, uh, that's kind of the whole thing. Honestly, I don't have a lot to say about this one. Like, it's not really funny, it's not poignant, it doesn't make any sort of point, it it doesn't have action in there, so I just don't I, I just don't get it. Like coming away from this, I don't see what the point of writing this was. Although there was one panel where it showed um Michelle and his kids getting vaporized by a, an alien laser, so I feel like the artist got a visit from the Secret Service after that, but, you know, whatever the case, I just, I, I just, I just don't see what the point of this one was. Next up, we have Barack the Barbarian. Now, this one was actually written because pretty early on in Obama's presidency, he mentioned that he used to be a really big fan of the Conan the Barbarian comics when he was a kid, so the, so some comic company just saw that and said, oh, let's do that. And, this one is obviously a Conan parody, and the plot is roughly about the 2008 election when Barack Obama first became president. Like, his name is Barack of Chicago, and he arrives in a city called Washington, and as soon as he gets there, there's people that are selling this drug, which they literally just call influence, and I, I think I... the moment that one of the merchant characters in the background just said, I'm selling pork by the barrel here. The, the moment they said that, I, I think that if anyone finds the comic writer, please just punch them in the face for me because that is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. And it only gets worse from there because the city is ruled by a guy called the Despot Boosh and his evil wizard who is the real power behind the throne and they're part of an elephant cult, and it's just... Guys, subtlety. Subtlety is the name of the game here. And then Barack just uh, decides he wants to take over, and in order to take over, he has to go through this whole long labyrinth full of monsters and shit. Like, there's monsters that are clearly meant to be Ann Coulter and other, like, uh, news anchors and such. And then, at near the end, he starts fighting monsters that look like this, so just the whole thing is it's so so unsubtle like whatever point you're trying to make you have to be subtle with it otherwise it's not going to stick and the whole time they're going through uh there's another group of people who are also trying to take over from the despot boosh there's this guy who's just called the old warrior who is also a member of the elephant cult but they they kind of respect him because he still has a sense of honor that's how they say it but his partner is just fucking Sarah Palin, so it's it's pretty clear who they're going on about here. And the thing is, Barack just agrees to go through the labyrinth and take over with no prompting. Like, he doesn't mention at the beginning that, yeah, I want to take over, or I want to fix things, or anything like that. It's just people mention to him, hey, if you want to take over, you have to go through the labyrinth and everything, and then Barack's just like, sure, let's do that. And then at the end, he overthrows Despot Boosh, and he frees Lady Liberty and he literally relights the torch of liberty, it's just... God. This whole thing is a masturbatory fantasy. Like, it's it's borderline propaganda. And it's funny at first, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I see the title, and I see Barack looking all muscled out, and I think it's funny, but the the novelty wears off really quick, and quite frankly, I would skip this one if I were you, because it it got old fast. Even if it's not that long, it got old really fast. Next up we have President Evil, and I have to give it credit just for that fucking name because that name made me laugh. Uh, but this one is all about Barat Obama fighting zombies. 
and he also fights them alongside other political figures like Hillary Clinton, Stephen Colbert, John McCain is there, Sarah Palin's there, Arnold Schwarzenegger shows up at one point, and it, this whole thing is just an absolute sugar rush, okay? This reminds me of when I was a small child and was just running around all the time, because you have Barack Obama as soon, uh, at the very beginning of this series, he's on Air Force One and the pilots are dead, so he has to try and land it and he crashes into a field of zombies, and then it turns out he has some sort of magical self-defense suit, so he just activates it, and he starts glowing like he's going Super Saiyan or something, and then he just fights through a horde of zombies like that. And then Sarah Palin shows up, and she just uses... Well, she just uses a lot of guns, so there's nothing really that noteworthy about that. And then Hillary Clinton is there, and she fights because she's just really angry at Bill, so that makes her strong or something. And John McCain is there fighting, and at first you think it's just John McCain being a badass, but then you realize it's actually John McCain piloting a John McCain robot. So it's not actually John McCain, but it is kind of John McCain. It, it doesn't make any sense. And then while they're fighting zombies, they also fight zombie George Washington, zombie Abraham Lincoln, zombie Billy Mays, and a whole bunch of others. And, and the whole time, I'm just sitting there with a giant smile on my face going, what the hell is going on here? Uh, but anyways, the zombies get a hold of a doomsday device and destroy the whole world, uh, but then, in the last issue, Barack and company are in some sort of post-apocalyptic wasteland, and they're going off to try and find a time machine, and they find it, and Barack goes back in time, and he starts warning everybody, and they prepare, and they don't completely stop the zombie outbreak, but they manage to mitigate it, and then it ends with Barack on Air Force One, as it's crashing, and then he has to try and crash land it again. He's like, oh shit, I gotta do all this again? And then so you realize the whole thing is just a time loop. And I can't decide if that's really clever or really lazy. So as I said, this whole thing is just a really stupid sugar rush. Like, if you want to watch Barack Obama go Super Saiyan and punch some zombies, then this is for you. It's, it's really stupid. Like, especially when they have Arnold Schwarzenegger talk, like, they... They talk the way everyone who thinks they can do an impression of Schwarzenegger talks, and it's it's really stupid, and it, not even stupid, actually. It's just kind of annoying. But for the most part, this is really funny and really enjoyable, and it's, it's short. It's only four issues long, so I think if you're looking to waste an hour or two, I would say check out President Evil, because this one is fun. And now we move to Japan, the country that ruins everything and we're going to be talking about manga that features Obama. Now, these aren't actually going to be all about Obama, they're just going to be about something else, but they feature Obama at some point. And first up is Air Gear. Now, Air Gear is a really terrible manga, and it's all about... Essentially, it's all about roller skating wizards. Because at the beginning, it's about just kids who have these special roller skates called... Uh, I believe they're called Air Treks and they're just roller skates that have motors in them, so you can go up walls and shit. And even back when I first read this, I read this around the time the series ended, so that was around 2012 or 2013, I was in my shonen fuckboy phase. I was right in the middle of that. And even then I thought this was really stupid, because while at first it was okay, over time they start using their skates to, like, shoot out fire and stuff, and I just... Okay, sure, whatever. And anyways, Barack Obama shows up around 200 chapters in. Only, his name is King Omaha for some reason. Like, like he's still the 44th president of the United States. They just, rather than calling him Barack Obama, he's President King Omaha. I don't know why they went with that, but they did. And anyways, um, he shows up and switches bodies with a Japanese schoolgirl, and... While I did reread part of this in preparation for this video, I genuinely do not remember how or why they switched bodies, and I don't think they ever give an actual explanation. If they did, feel free to correct me, but I do not care enough to check. And anyways, he switches bodies with a Japanese schoolgirl, and at one point he like actually takes a shower in her body and stuff like that, which is a little uncomfortable, but kind of funny, I'll admit. And then he tells all the main characters about the plot that the villains have to use roller skates to take over the world, because this series was written by an insane person, 
And it's not insane in a good way. I really want to reiterate that. It's, it's a terrible manga from start to finish. And also, apparently, King Omaha's home village over in Kenya got destroyed by the bad guys, so that's part of why he wants to help fight. Anyways, uh, anyways, later on, Omaha in the Japanese schoolgirl's body picks up a assault rifle and helps the helps fight the bad guys at the end, so he helps save the day, I suppose. All I can say about this is, what the fuck? That, that's all I can say about it. Like, there's, there's nothing else to add. It's just, what the fuck? And I, I've read another series by the same manga artist uh, called uh, Tenjo Tenge, and I feel kind of the same way about that one. It got weird at points, it got pointlessly edgy at points, overall it was just really stupid and terrible. And to finish off today, I'd like to talk about a manga called Gamblefish. Now this one, this one is not very well known. In fact, there's actually a Wikipedia page which lists a whole bunch of Barack Obama's comic appearances, and Gamblefish is not on there, at least as of the time of this recording. If you're, an, if you're an editor at Wikipedia, feel free to throw it on there. But anyways, Gamblefish is a manga all about, well, basically it's about a guy who cheats at gambling. <laughs> like, or m maybe he doesn't cheat without getting caught, but a lot of times he also just uses intelligent strategy and mind games to win and defeat his opponents. You know, like if you're looking for a series about a character who's just cool and defeats all his opponents using mind games, I would say something like Death Note is still better, but Gamblefish is a lot of fun because the series is just meant to be cool. You know, it's just meant to show off the main character go and how cool he is and how he's surrounded by all these girls that are fawning over him, that sort of thing. And it's also a very horny manga, I should, I should mention. Like, it starts off pretty horny, but it only gets worse as time goes on. So in the final act of Gamblefish, like in many shonen manga, it ends with this big tournament arc. Like, they go to Macau, and there's a big gambling competition, and the main bad guy is there, so the main character, his name's Tomu, just decides, okay, you know what, we're gonna go there, we're gonna defeat everybody. And then, uh, when it gets to the tournament roster, it introduces, like, this whole new cast of colorful characters, and as you're reading it, you realize, okay, so these guys are all gonna have their own competitions and everything. Okay, that's fine. And when it gets to the last person, it's this dude wearing a hood, and he just rips it off, and everyone's like, oh my god, it's the 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama! Except they call him King Omaha again. I don't know... I don't know why the Japanese manga community decided that that was the best thing to call him, but that's what they decided to call him. And yeah, he just shows up and participates in the final tournament against the main bad guy. At first he shows up and he's almost just a caricature of his real world self. Like, he's constantly saying, hope and change and yes I can. Like, when people say, you'll never defeat me, he just keeps going, yes I can. Like, it's not meant to be taken all that seriously. I get it, it's a joke. And before he even uh, participates in the tournament, though, I have to bring this up because there are these two Brazilian sisters who are in the tournament and they claim that they met a jaguar god and the jaguar god gave them a lifetime's amount of luck but the the flip side of that is that they would have to die after one year. Uh, uh, okay. And then during their uh, their tournament match they use up all their luck so afterwards when they lose, it looks like, oh, they're about to die, and they start shriveling away into husks, and then Barack Obama just comes up with them and says, I will reinvigorate your spirit. Yes, I can change you, like, just, you know, slogans, basically, and he wraps them in an American flag and heals them with his Americanness, I guess, and then they're just all better afterwards. And I, th th this whole part's a fucking fever dream, let me tell you. Like, the manga is kind of weird in general, but when Obama shows up, it gets even weirder. Uh, but then... When it gets to his tournament part, he's just playing essentially Russian roulette with the main bad guy, and he actually... Okay, the reason that he's in the tournament is to get something from the bad guy, basically, without going into too much detail. It's like a super hacker computer code or something like that. And he actually does win. He makes it so that the bad guy has to fire with a fully loaded gun. But the bad guy, what he does is he points the gun at his forehead like this, and he purposely makes it so that the bullet goes between the hemispheres of his brain and misses all the major blood vessels and everything and just pops out the back of his head. 
And at first they think he's dead, but then he just pops back up and he's like, nope, I'm fine. And Okay, even if you somehow managed to do that on purpose, I'll just accept that you can do that on purpose. You can't, but I'll just accept it because, you know, it's a fucking comic book. Even if you did that, you would need some medical attention afterwards. Like, you have a two holes in your skull now. Like, you're going to be bleeding a lot, and hell, if nothing else, I'd be worried about the wound getting infected. Uh, but, you know, not not long after that, uh, Barack Obama also has to shoot himself, except he, the chair that he was on broke, so the bullet just kind of grazed his skull. And anyways, he, he surrenders after that, and... I mean, it makes sense, because, you know, it's the main bad guy. You can't have him taken out before the main character gets a chance to do it. But nonetheless, it's still really fucking bizarre. And actually, one of the bets that he made with the bad guy during that competition was that if the bad guy won, he would put his face on Mount Rushmore, and the final panel of the manga is that. So <laughs> just make of that what you will. And I have to say that this one is my favorite Obama in comics cameo because it uh, it seems to understand that he shouldn't be the focus. You know, he's just one character, one very colorful character in a large, colorful cast. And when he shows up for a little while, he does his bit, and then he leaves. Whereas with Air Deer, he was kind of a side character, but he stayed there for a while, and so the novelty of oh shit, Obama's here wore off quickly. And in fact, the other ones where Obama is the main character, same story, the novelty wore off quickly. Whereas this one, it's just kind of making fun of not only, or maybe not even making fun of, but it's, it, the character of King Omaha is just Barack Obama's personality taken to an extreme, as well as just general Americanness taken to an extreme. And, you know, he shows up, he does his thing, and then he leaves. So it works out really, really well. Overall, I just have to ask, why are there so many Obama comics out there? I, I don't get it. That We didn't have this many for George Bush. I don't think we have this many for Donald Trump or any other world leaders for that matter. I just, why, why are there so many people that are not only willing to write a fan, essentially fan fiction about Barack Obama? Because writing fan fiction is a lot easier than making a comic book because... You have to not only write it, but also do the coloring and the drawing and all that stuff. And if it's published, you obviously have to get publishers to agree to this. And I just have to ask, why are there so many? Because most of them don't seem to be serving a purpose. Like, some of them are political, I don't know, satire? Celebration? Propaganda? Like, like Barack the Barbarian is borderline propaganda, I'll say that. But others are just... Like, Air Gear is just, hey, look at Obama do this weird stuff. And in fact, that's what all of them are. They just kind of make the same joke over and over again. Look at Obama do weird shit. And Gamblefish, it worked well because he was only there for a little while. But in Air Gear, he was there forever. In Barack the Barbarian, in uh, President Evil, in Drafted, it was all just, look at Obama do weird things. So I have to ask, like, what inspired people to make these? Then again, I ask that for most fan fiction, so I guess, I guess I can't stop you. Special thanks to all the patrons you see here, and a super special thanks to all my $10 and up patrons, who include Oppo Savalanen, Alex Humba, Ashley Watson, B. Quinn, Brother Santotis, Christopher Quinten, Embis, Emily Miller, Evan Stagall, Joel, Carcat Kitsune, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mike, NB Star, Sad Martigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Topher Wheeler, Vacuous Silas, and Vevictus. Without you guys, I would not be able to spend all my time looking for weird shit like this to put into YouTube videos and then send to the world. And if you aren't a patron, then consider giving me money so you can get your name on here as well as early access to my videos and other stuff. And if you've watched this far, then thanks a whole bunch. Please like the video, comment on it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Bye.